World War II was a truly global conflict beginning in 1939 and lasting until 1945 in which millions died. On December 7, 1941, Japan carried out a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Shortly thereafter, the United States officially entered the war. While millions of American men were leaving their jobs and marching into military bases, millions of women were filling those now vacant positions on the assembly line and in other companies all across America. Their labor would supply not only their husbands and brothers, but also their allies with everything they needed to wage war. One woman, in particular, became a legend with a partner, Rosina di Bonavita, assembled in one shift an entire wing of a torpedo bomber, ramming in a record 3,345 rivets. This and other Herculean feats of production caused her to become the famous poster woman, Rosie the Riveter. <laughs> Here, in her own words, Dallas Tomisto recalls how she, too, quietly and capably took over a job normally held by a man to help out with the war effort. Amazingly, when the war ended, she just as quietly gave up that job to the returning war heroes and went home to raise her family. My name is Dallas Tomisto. Uh, I'm going to start my story when we lived in Superior, Wisconsin. Now, this is 1943, and uh, we had three children. My uh, first son, he was two years old, and then I had twins, a boy and a girl, and they were eight months old. And my husband was uh, working as an engineer for Superior Water, Light, and Power. And he was deferred from the service on the account of health reasons. So anyway, he had heard that there was a steel plant being built in Provo, Utah, which is 50 miles south of Salt Lake City. So he applied for the job, and now at this point, the steel plant was on construction. So he got the job, and he left by train and went out to Utah, and leaving us behind and until he found us housing. And um, so this was in 19, um, about the December 1st is when I took off with my children in the car. And we had a pretty nice car, like it was a 41 Pontiac. And uh, they were, we were on uh, uh, guest, guest uh, stamps. You know, we had to have gas stamps to buy gas. So they issued me enough stamps just to get to Utah. And I barely had enough. By the time I got here, I think I had a couple of stamps left over. And I had my three children. Besides, I had uh, my youngest brother, which was 13 at the time. And he lived with us because my parents had died. And uh, so he was living with us. And uh, also, I took along my husband's sister, my sister-in-law, to watch these kids, help me with these kids. I had made a bed in the back seat for the twins to lay on, and uh, she was back there taking care of the, helping with my twins. And we drove, and we took us three days, and we'd stop in little motels along the way, and I could manage to make some more formula for the babies. And anyway, when we got to Provo, you know, it was such different scenery. The mountains, the Provo's in a valley, and, and there's no mountains in Wisconsin or Superior anyway. <laughs> so it was such different. I thought, how can they build a steel plant in amongst these mountains? And sure enough, it would come down into the valley and it just leveled off. And, and um, so he had a, uh, my husband had a house for us, so we moved into this house. And, um, and then I had to have a babysitter no, I get back to the time when I uh, decided I wanted to go to work, or they were asking for help. 
out at the steel plant. What year? Now this is still 40, no this is 44 because see that was just the beginning of the next year after we left Superior. So this is 1943, four, and um, so when I, I went out there and I decided they were asking for help so I went to uh, out there to apply for a job and sure enough they hired, they were hiring all the women were lined up all waiting, all applying for jobs. So they processed us right through, taking our pictures, making us badges to get in and out of the steel plant, and uh, wanted us to come to work right away. And uh, this was shift work. Four, we worked from 12 to 8, and 8 to 4, and 4 to 12. So we had every week we changed. And um, so then I needed a babysitter. After all, I had these three little kids, and I thought, boy, what am I going to do now? And so anyway, I sent a telegram to my sister because it was, I don't know, I guess I don't know if there was phones or what then, but anyway, sure enough, she decided to come and she came out on a troop train. That all the trains were full of troops, you know, during the war, they were all traveling all over. And um, so she came out and she took care of my children and uh, I went to work and I started out as a sweeper. They swept these big areas from, oh, they'd go from, Oh, many, many, many yards down, you know, steep sweeping up the floors and um, paid 79 cents an hour. So, um, so after I think they were promoting us pretty fast because I think I only a couple months and then uh, we were, I was put onto a, where we were called hookers, where we put the hooks under the plates of steel and then a crane came down and picked up the steel and put it into boxcars. So we worked at that, or I worked at that for, I think, maybe a couple months. And then they were promoting us, so then they wanted to know if I would go up in the cranes and operate a crane. Well, uh, these were overhead cranes, and um, of course I had to start out um, with a, practicing with a magnet where I picked up scrap steel. And uh, we picked up the scrap steel and I'd take it and dump it into the boxcar and re release it and the steel would fall and go back and get some more, dump some more. <laughs> and then pretty soon they put me out where I would was running it. So I would pick up these plates of steel, we'd lift them up and move them over and dump, put them in the boxcars. And then they were all ready and the next car came along and the steel was coming down. And, and um, so I worked at that then. I must have worked on that till almost 1946 or late 45, after the war ended anyway. And um, so then there was a lot of servicemen coming home from the service and all looking for jobs. And they suggested us women that we should give up our jobs and f for the, these servicemen. And um, so I, I decided to, because I had my three kids and my sister wanted to get on without taking care of kids who wanted to do something else. And uh, so anyway, that was my, uh, my husband still worked at the, worked in the power plant. And in fact, he lived there, he worked there till he died. And that was since 1967. And of course then my children were big and um, from then on is when after that I came down to Arizona.